Alrighty, so here we are for part two of the Using Ubuntu series. Now today we're going to be having a look at some of the pre-installed applications that come on Ubuntu and how to use them uh, and how to use them to accomplish your everyday tasks. Now Ubuntu has a really good software selection in its distribution. They really stick to the essentials as to what the average user is going to need and so those are the applications I'm going to focus on today. So first of all, if we start out, we go up to the Applications menu which is up in the top left hand corner and under accessories we've got a calculator we've also got a character map a disk usage analyzer managing print jobs searching for files take a screenshot terminal text editor and tomboy notes now, this is all going to look very, very confusing at the moment because I've got a lot of stuff here. So, let's go through it one by one. Calculator, self-explanatory. It does have different functions. You can go into advanced financial or programming mode of this calculator. So it's quite a powerful one compared to the one that comes with Windows. Next, let's have a look at the character map. Now, the character map is essentially, um, you can find different characters for, uh, it displays all your fonts in your system and uh, the default font is the Ubuntu font and it has support for many different languages as you can see here. Next you also have the Disk Usage Analyzer. Now the Disk Usage Analyzer is a tool where you can find out what's taking up the most room on your hard drive. So you can scan your home folder, which I'm going to do here, and you can see that the pictures on, on this particular drive are taking up the most space. So it's very handy, so if you've got a rogue file somewhere that's kind of huge and you don't know about it, then you can come in here, find out where it is, and then go to that folder and delete it. Next we've also got the managing print jobs. Now this managing print jobs is once you've got a printer installed, it'll queue up all the print jobs here and you can send them to the printer again, you can close them, you can rearrange them, etc, etc. It's fairly self-explanatory again. We've also got search for files, which again is very self-explanatory. If we search for Ubuntu, it comes up with all the different search results that I've got on my folder. Take a screenshot, again, very self-explanatory. All you have to do is select whether to grab the whole desktop, grab a current window, or select an area to grab. Grab after a delay of so many seconds. You can include the pointer, or you can even apply effects. And then you say, take the screenshot, and there it is. And you can see it looks all weird because I zoomed out at the same time. And you can save that picture to your desktop and voila. We also have the terminal, which I'm going to talk about later, but you probably won't need to go into this too often. We've got Getit or Gedit, which is the GNOME text editor. Again, extremely lightweight text editor. Generally, it's used by programmers, but I find it very useful just for taking quick notes. It's an extremely light program. It's very fast, and you can save things very quickly. And Tomboy Notes, which is an amazing application in its own right. Basically, what this is is that any time you come across something that you're trying to take a note of, like on a website or anything, you copy-paste it into Tomboy Notes. So you can say, let's say, start a new note, and create a heading such as my note. Once you've done that, you can just and uh, you can just copy paste what you're wanting to uh, put into it. So we'll just do, 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 and then it'll automatically save it. So you can see it's here in your list of notes, and it's automatically saved it. And the other good thing about Tomboy Notes is that you can sync it to a local folder, to your Ubuntu One account, to your Tomboy Web account, or to a web dev protocol. So it's very, very helpful, and so if you've got multiple systems running Ubuntu, they can all be synced with your Tomboy Notes, so that no matter where you're working, whether it's on your laptop or your desktop, you've got these notes with you, and you can keep working on the projects that you're working on. Then under Games, we've got the Solitaire, we've got G-Brainy, we've got Mahjong, Mines, Quadrapuzzle, and Sudoku. Now, I'm sure most of you are familiar with what these games are about. Solitaire, very simple, Spider Solitaire. G-Brainy, it's basically like a logic game where you can test different, uh, where you can test yourself 
and quiz yourself on different logic facts, be they calculation, memory, verbal, etc, etc. It times your skills and tracks them to see if you're getting better, and basically it's one of those brain improvement tools. And Mahjong, for those of you who play this game, I personally don't, but I imagine it has something to do with some sort of uh, puzzle or something like that, so I'll leave that to you people who play Mahjong. Minds, everybody knows this game. Anybody who's been around computers since Windows 95 knows what that game is about. Quadrapuzzle, which is basically Tetris. If I go New Game, and there it is. You rotate by using the up and down arrow keys, and then you sli slowly slide them in. And of course, we've got Sudoku, and everybody knows Sudoku. Moving on, we've got Graphics. I'll talk about OpenOffice in a minute, but I want to talk about Shotwell Photo Manager. Now, this is the default uh, photo manager for Ubuntu 10.10. It used to be FSpot, but I believe Shotwell is just simpler and it doesn't take up as much space. So, it's going to import photos from my pictures folder. Now, it just so happens I do have pictures in there. So, it's going to start importing them as you can see down here. Now, what it'll do is it'll sort them out as to tags and it will also sort them into events. As you can see, it's working very hard on all the tags here and in come the photos. So then once you click on photos, you can see it's sorted them out into a nice layout and it's very, very quick to load the thumbnails for the photos. Now, once you've got the photos loaded, you can come in here and you can edit them. You can rotate them or crop them or red eye adjust or enhance them. And you can also tag them, add tags, sort them out, edit the titles, you can look at the metadata, and overall it's a very, it's a highly capable program. It also sorts them out into events, so any photos that were taken together, it sorts them out into events and places them in a very easy on the eyes dialogue. You can see here that I imported these photos all at the same time, and so it's grouped them into one collection. Shotwell will soon support videos as well. As for right now, it only supports photos. But as a photo manager, it is very nice. It also ties in with cameras, so anytime you connect a camera or an SD card, it'll ask you if you want to import those photos off that SD card or We've camera. We've also got Simple Scan, which does exactly what it says it does. Now it says that there's no scanner detected, but basically all you do is you plug that scanner in, whatever it may be, it'll pick it up, it'll recognize it, and then you just click scan. It's as simple as that. Let's move on to internet. Now we've got the Empathy Instant Messenger. Basically, Empathy is like your IM, uh, your IM account. Now basically it can tie in with Google Talk or AIM, Windows Live, many other chats. So all you have to do is punch in your account details and it works much like any other instant messaging client. It can connect to bucket loads of protocols and bucket loads of different accounts. So unlike most instant messenger assistance. It ties in with multiple accounts and gives you access to all of your instant messaging accounts all in one program which is very very helpful. Again it also ties in with the me menu up the top here. So you can say if you're available, if you're away or if you're busy etc etc. Under internet we also have Evolution Mail which is basically the Ubuntu equivalent of Outlook and it covers everything to do with your email, your calendars. I'll cover that more in depth at another time. We've also got the Firefox web browser, which is what everybody is familiar with. Gwibber Social Client, which ties into your microblogging accounts, such as Facebook and Twitter, and it can beam out messages and updates to those accounts simultaneously from the Me Menu again. So the Me Menu really becomes a very useful tool, particularly once you've got all those accounts Back under up. internet, we also have Remote Desktop Viewer, Terminal Server Client, and Transmission BitTorrent Client. Now, again, Transmission is a um, file sharing program, so everybody knows what BitTorrent is. Again, only legal downloads, please. I do use Transmission all the time. It downloads Linux distros like you wouldn't believe. But I do not advocate piracy or anything in that respect. Got it? Thank you. Now let's move on to Office. We have a dictionary, which ties into the online dictionary and gives you definitions for words. Simple enough. We've also got Evolution Mail and Calendar again, and we've got OpenOffice.org. Now, OpenOffice.org is the free software equivalent of Microsoft Office, and it is highly capable. It can do anything you ask it to. It's compatible with Microsoft Office 2007, 2010, and in, in essence, it does a great job. Its interface isn't quite as snazzy as something like Microsoft Office. It looks a little bit more like Office 2003, but it should be very easy for people to adapt to and to uh, start working in. It's highly capable, it can do everything that you would expect an office suite to do, and it's completely free, so I'm not complaining at all. You've got a presentation wizard as well, which can help you get started for your uh, presentation, so let's just open from a template here. Uh, let's choose that one. 
and you can say create and here we are in OpenOffice presentation and you can add titles, you can add animation effects and you can choose different layouts again it's a lot like Microsoft PowerPoint I don't think new users will have any trouble getting themselves adjusted very to this. capable program and even as a application on Windows I couldn't recommend OpenOffice enough we've also got OpenOffice Calc which takes care of all things to do with spreadsheets so it's like Microsoft Excel you can do all your different formulas and functions it's it's 100 percent compatible with Microsoft Office and a lot of the macros that people have been complaining about have been fixed and if you import them in the right way then it works it supports all sorts of different languages and all sorts of different currencies everything that you would expect a spreadsheet program to handle it can do under sound and video we have Bracero Disk Burner which is like a Nero which is like the Nero suite on Windows it basically takes care of all your disk burning needs it can create data it can create data disks it can create audio projects videos disk copies and it can burn images very very helpful we've also got the movie player which plays all your which takes care of all your movies Such as this one here And we also have PTV Video Editor. And I'll be making another video about PTV Video Editor at a later date because it is quite a capable program even though it looks quite simple. All you have to do is drag a video into the media library and maybe drag some audio as well. So let's have a look. We'll go into our music folder here and we'll just grab something and you can chuck it onto the timeline chuck the music on there as well and away it goes no worries and finally I want to talk about Rhythmbox Music Player again under sound and video on your applications menu Rhythmbox Music Player is the default music player in Ubuntu and it is much like iTunes or any of those now all, it do, all it's going to do is it's going to import the music in my music folder sort them out into artists and albums and then I can play away and, and it grabs the artwork from the internet you can use it to sort out your podcasts it can tie in with your last FM account and you can also look on the Gemendo store the, Meg, uh, the Magnitude store or the Ubuntu One Music Store now the Ubuntu One Music Store provides you with popular music that you can download that's free of digital rights management and all in all it's quite a good service it doesn't have quite the range that something like the iTunes music store or the Microsoft Zune store has but it, again it's highly capable and you can download mp3s without any DRM on them whatsoever which is very helpful and not only that but when you buy music in the Ubuntu One store it will automatically synchronize to your Ubuntu One account which comes with your install so whenever you buy music every computer that is running Ubuntu will automatically download that music from your Ubuntu account so that whenever you buy an album you have that album on all of your computers that run Ubuntu very handy indeed and all in all it's a highly capable music player and I'm going to discuss more music player options in the future you can shuffle or you can repeat songs you can turn on visualizations and most importantly with this release of Ubuntu it also comes with the sound menu integration so you can pause play and skip tracks just with this menu here so even when Rhythmbox is minimized and you can't see it running on the taskbar it is running it's just up here in the sound menu very helpful to just have it playing music in the background while you do go about your work well that concludes part two of the using Ubuntu series in the next video we're going to have a look at configuring the system and we're going to look at personalizing it to get it looking the way you want it to then after that in subsequent videos I'm going to go into which applications can do a better job than the ones that are currently installed for most users the ones that come installed with Ubuntu are going to be just fine and dandy but if you want slightly more advanced programs or programs with more options that's what's coming up on the using Ubuntu series.